fellow humans, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Rachel. There are my curls today. I am all natural. Look at this. You see this one? That's so cute. I hope everyone is safe and well during everything that's going on. I know it's just an insane time. As some of you may have noticed, there was no video last week just because I had surgery on my back during a pandemic. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience in the hospital and my surgery during a pandemic and during pretty much the craziest time in history. So let's just get into it. If you know me at all, you know that I am extremely accident prone. I have injured myself in so many countless ways. I threw out my back about four years ago by sitting in a chair. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. In my defense, it was after a very stressful, long, across the country move. I was heavy lifting, I was really stressed out, I was sleeping on a couch. It was not great. So yeah, I uh, threw out my back sitting in the chair. I remember not being able to stand up at all because the pain was so great. I could not put any weight down at all on my feet, on my, especially on my right leg. And I was stuck on the floor for hours. One of my friends that is a massage therapist actually came over and she helped me by giving, you know, she was trying to massage my back and trying to relieve the muscle spasms that I was having. It helped, but only a little bit. She helped with the muscle spasms but there, there was like still a pain there. Now I had gotten my back to a point where it didn't hurt me so bad anymore. So I ignored the issue for years. I'm the type of person who really doesn't like going to the doctor. So I avoided it as much as possible. Five years, I avoided the doctor for five years. And during those five years, I was suffering from back pain, muscle spasms in my leg, like my leg would cramp up so bad for no reason. I would just sit there and my leg would just start cramping. It's the most uncomfortable thing in the whole wide world. So yeah, I lived like that for five long years. I know, it's stupid, but that's what I did. So fast forward to October, 2019, so this past October, I was feeling particularly determined to rake my entire yard. So I'm raking, and you know that twisting motion that you're raking with, and I was doing that for hours, and I was like, I could do this, you know, I'm not hurting. The day after, I could not move. The pain was unreal. Like, I would not wish this pain on anyone. It literally felt like there was something poking out of my back, like right in between the vertebrae, like wedged in there. There was shooting pains that went down my leg, into my toes, and I started to lose feeling on my two pinky toes. So these two toes were completely numb. Like I couldn't feel anything when I was them but the feeling inside the toes was like pins and needles all the time like it didn't stop ever so my dumbass goes to a chiropractor thinking that you know maybe if I got my back cracked a couple of times that the pain would just magically disappear boy was I wrong <laughs> by going to the chiropractor it kind of made the herniation worse. Now, I'm not telling you to not go to chiropractors because you know they are helpful if you know exactly what's going on with you and you get approval from your doctor, like go for it. I'm not bad mouthing chiropractors at all. It was my stupid decision to go to a chiropractor before actually knowing exactly what's wrong with my back. Like, don't do that. Always talk to your doctor before you do anything drastic with your life, especially if you're in pain. Don't be like me. So, after the chiropractor, the pain was so bad that I couldn't even sleep in my bed anymore. I had to sleep on the couch 
propped up on pillows, like, like wedged in in a certain way where I wasn't lying completely on my back. Like I would have to lie at an angle because that was the only way that I could get comfortable enough to sleep. I couldn't work anymore. I couldn't stand anymore. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get any exercise. I couldn't do anything. I was gaining weight and I was just completely miserable through and through to the point where I was crying almost every single day just from being in the state that I was. It really honestly took an emotional toll on me. So yes, in February, it took me a couple of months to finally just say that enough is enough. I need to go to a doctor and I need to get my back looked at. So I get all my appointments set up and I go and I go get a CAT scan. I think it's called a CAT scan. That tube, when you go down, when you go through the tube, is that a CAT scan? I, I don't remember. And sure enough, I have a severe herniation in my L5-S1, as seen here. Ouch. <laughs> Owie. So my doctor, she called me with the results and she goes, Girl, <laughs> you need surgery and you need it bad. So she hooks me up with a neurosurgeon and I'm scheduled to have surgery in March. So mind you, this is February and they're telling me I have surgery in March. So that's like a whole month long wait. And as you can imagine, every single day was the longest day to ever exist. And mind you, when you're in pain, the time goes by a lot slower. So finally, March is here. I am a week away from my surgery. And then Rona hits. I get a phone call. Hi, uh, um, Rachel, I am so sorry to tell you that we're gonna have to cancel your surgery. I was completely heartbroken. I cried for days. I'm gonna be stuck like this forever. Don't worry about me, I'll be okay. I'll be fine, okay? One eternity later. So about three weeks ago, which is about two weeks away from my surgery, I get the call from my neurosurgeon saying, we're in the clear, you can come and get your surgery done because you are an emergency case. Thank God. So one of the things that I really had to do was go and get the, the Rona test. I'll play the clip now. So here I am trying to muster up the strength to go. Any other time, I wouldn't be nervous for my surgery, but because it's during a pandemic, I'm freaking out just, just a little bit. It's gonna be okay, right? I have nothing to worry about. I'm in safe hands. These doctors know what they're doing. But dang it, Rona, why you gotta go mess up everything? Obviously, I'm not gonna film the process because I don't think I should. But yeah, what else is there to say right now? Uh, okay, time to go. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my God. Don't you keep this on? Whew. See, my eye is watering. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It was very uncomfortable. Went like to my brain with a cotton swab and it just tickled like like crazy but it wasn't as bad as I thought so that's the good news so after I got my test I had to go to a pre-op appointment you know my doctor gives me the rundown of what's gonna happen and then I ask him is it okay if my husband comes in and he goes no no one's allowed to come in with you and I was so mortified because not only am I going in for a back surgery, that alone is kind of scary, but I have to go by myself during a pandemic. Let me tell you that threw me through a loop, like multiple loops, like all of them because I was so upset. I'm gonna have to go get back surgery 
and stay overnight because this is this is the procedure like I have to stay overnight I really gotta thank my husband and my mom they both were able to talk to me and get me to calm down and let me vent how I felt about it and they really brought me into a place where I knew I was gonna be okay so here's a clip of me the night before my surgery so tomorrow's the big day and I am feeling pretty nervous. I'm just kind of sitting here collecting my thoughts, trying to like mentally process everything. And it's like kind of crazy. So I go in in the morning, I stay the whole day and overnight, and then I leave the next day. And not once can my husband come and see me or anyone. You know, I have full faith in my doctor. I, you know, it's not that I am scared that he's not gonna do a good job or something is gonna go wrong, but I don't know. It's just like an uneasy feeling, but this surgery is so long overdue. My hair is crazy. Yeah, I have to get up at like five o'clock because I need to have time to shower. I have to sh shower tonight with special soap and also in the morning and then I gotta be there for six and my husband is dropping me off at the door and I am going in by myself. Probably the only thing I'm gonna be doing tonight is watching Netflix and taking a shower with my soap and lights out until 5 a.m. in the morning. In the morning, I just woke up. It's still dark outside, so I'm gonna hop in the shower. Um, finish packing my bag. I got an hour to get to the hospital, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, it's time to go. My husband's dropping me off. <laughs> I don't think so. It is pretty exciting because. At least I'll be fixed so I can get my life back in shape. Mm-hmm. Get that booty right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk the whole way. Where am I dropping off? Uh, main entrance. No, with the dump. Sorry for the audio quality, guys. I just didn't feel like hooking everything up today. But when I got there, I was put in this room. I got hooked up to some IVs and I sat and waited until they brought me back for surgery. Okay, so I just got a surgery about an hour ago. Still waking up, still feeling groggy. My throat is incredibly dry. I got a new earring. I don't know what this is or what it does. I was so lucky to have the room all to myself and I had a view. Couldn't beat that. I didn't want to film too much in the hospital because I was really out of it. So this is about it for hospital footage. I'm home now and I'm going for a short little walk. It was approved by my doctor that I could go for a walk. Breaking out, jeez. But uh, yeah, getting a walk in. So yeah, it's been a crazy ride. So now I'm just in the recovery process. My scar is huge and I'm not too happy about it, but um, if you know any good scar creams or how to get rid of scars, let me know. Let me know your method please in the comments or something. So right now I'm just waiting on my post-op appointment, which is gonna be sometime next week. And I think I start physical therapy from there. My doctor told me that I really need to take it easy, nothing crazy. So yeah, that was that crazy experience. So it's been exactly a week today when I'm filming um, since I've had the surgery and I am feeling so good. The pain is gone, mostly. I mean, I'm still feeling pain at the incision site. I honestly just can't wait to get my life back in order. Like, I've been in pain for so long, I just wanna be able to just, I don't know, play rugby and cliff dive all at the same time. Once I'm healed and good to go, best believe just go home and be working out. 
because I ain't getting any younger. But I still have a lot of life to live. So yeah, that pretty much is it. I uh, have nothing else to say except thank you for watching. And if you would subscribe and hit that like button, that'd be pretty great. Next week is gonna be the start of a three-part series. I mentioned it in my last video of um, the color contacts. So look out for that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Stay safe and well. Bye.